local station. The morning show starts now. Dozens of bodies slowly removed overnight from Pulse nightclub in Orlando. You're looking live at the area where a gunman shot and killed 50 people, wounding 53 others early yesterday morning. Omar Mateen opened fire inside that club, taking hostages. Good morning, everyone. You know, they say they thought the sound of gunfire was just part of the loud music, part of the show that night. Shots erupted at Pulse nightclub around 2 a.m. Sunday. It was Latin night at the club, and many of those killed we know are Latino. By the time the SWAT team used an armor vehicle to smash down the door, they had lined the wall with explosives. Three hours later, trying to negotiate with this man, it turned into the deadliest mass shooting in the history of our country. At one point during that shooting, Omar Mateen called 911 and pledged allegiance to ISIS. We know he is an American citizen. His parents are from Afghanistan. And this morning, family members, friends, and people around the country are left wondering why he decided to open fire. He was eventually killed by police during a shootout inside Pulse. We have also learned the FBI knew about Mateen. In fact, he was interviewed twice on their radar for possible ties to extremists, but those investigations were closed. Now a state of emergency has been declared across Florida and in Orange County, where investigators are still processing the largest murder scene in Orlando's history. Flags around the country are flying at half staff, ordered by President Obama. Bruce is now joining us live. He's in Orlando outside Pulse nightclub following the latest developments. Bruce. Jen, there is a massive police presence just a couple of blocks down the street in the Pulse nightclub where they are combing through the crime scene where at least 50 people are dead. New information, 22 bodies have been positively identified, 53 others being treated at the hospital, though there is unconfirmed word that some of those may have suffered fatal gunshot wounds, and the police have yet to tell us whether or not the, the casualty rate is going to rise. And in fact, we should learn more in just about a half an hour at 7.30. Let me show you what's happening just to the right of me. It's a staging area. We expect to hear from law enforcement. It would surprise me if the Orlando police chief, the Orange County Sheriff, FDLE's spokesperson, and even the FBI special agent in charge for this area doesn't bring us up to date on the course of the investigation. Let me take you back to the wee hours of Sunday morning. It's about 2 o'clock and gunfire rings out as 300 people are inside the Pulse nightclub as police storm the building to try and take down the gunman. Watch and listen. In the end, the gunman, 29-year-old Omar Mateen, lied dead. The people who were inside that nightclub say it was nothing short of hellish. Some hid under bodies, others in bathrooms, others took shelter wherever they could, and still others ran. Now they say that Omar Mateen was heavily armed. We have some pictures to show you of some of the weaponry that he was believed to be carrying. Two assault rifles and a 9 millimeter semi-pistol. And I want to show you another picture that is just very riveting. This is a, a helmet a Kevlar helmet that an Orlando police officer was wearing. Mateen apparently came out of the club, confronted this police officer, and shot at him. Yeah. See that hole there to the right side of the helmet? That is a bullet hole. The man, the police officer, could have been dead. That helmet saved his life. He escaped with only an eye injury. And he told his police superiors he feels lucky to be alive. We've not learned the identity of that police officer at this time. We have team coverage here on Channel 4 and on NewsForJax.com as we're streaming live. Crime and safety analyst Gil Smith will join us. A lot of people have criticized SWAT for taking about three hours to move.